is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday uh, so far. I did want to get into a little a couple things with Bitcoin and Ethereum today and some news. Um, just, uh, you know, wanted to touch on, you know, why did I really get into Bitcoin and what am I setting my goals for the future with cryptocurrency? You know, everybody thinks that we're going to be the next um, money out there is digital money. Everybody's going to be able to use it. And I believe wholeheartedly in it. You know, I, I dug in deep in the beginning of this year in January, December, January, and I literally took two, three months out of my life and just dug into exactly what cryptocurrency is. What are we dealing with here in this market? Um, and, you know, and I'm still learning. So, and that's why in everything that I'm learning, I, I really want to try and put it on video. Um, and I apologize if I move forward a little too much. Uh, sometimes I just, I think everybody already knows um, these things of uh, cryptocurrency and, and some sometimes I'm wrong. You know, a lot of people I talk to just in person just don't really understand anything that I'm talking about. Um, and sometimes I forget that people aren't, you know, having researched as much as I did in the three month span and so on and so forth. And I'm not saying nobody knows what I don't know, but it's, you know, it's just a different point of view, different perspective um, based on stock market uh, trading and learning from mentors and watching people on YouTube. You know, um, I was just watching, you know, Crypto Crow, which everybody kind of knows Crypto Crow. And he was talking about how he started and so on. And he was saying that he was just he watched Ian Bellina and everything Ian Bellina did. So did I. I did exactly the same thing. I didn't know he was doing that. At the same time, watching other people, um, especially and Crypto Crow, because he's just so emotional on it. Uh, I'm not a big emotional guy when it comes to the crypto market or any market at that. Because you start putting emotion into it, um, sometimes it gets it, most of the time it gets away from your technical thoughts. So I, I did just want to touch on these things, just so uh, you know everybody uh, kind of understands where I'm coming from. You know, I've had Ian Bellina, you know, a couple other people uh, comment on my videos when I first started and now I'm just kind of flatlining and I don't know is it something that I'm doing wrong or, or what but um, I would like everybody to kind of tell me what's going on but let's move forward in the, into the uh, crypto market here but please like subscribe hit the bell comment below and uh, we can go from there um, as far as uh, keeping my videos up and running because uh, obviously if I don't get enough subscribers and enough likes then I'm not going to be able to go anywhere in this world so uh, let's get right in the crypto world, cryptocurrency here. So Bitcoin, uh, it's at 8100, 8200 at the moment. And uh, Ethereum's at 465. And this looks like last year um, around October, November. You know, we were kind of doing the same thing in October, November. So uh, same pricing anyways. It was around 8500 for Bitcoin and Ethereum is at 450. So uh, there's some, uh, you know, some equalization there from last year. So it looks like we're getting ready for another pump up. And that's kind of what everybody is saying. You know, this is the fam Unger family of technical analysis. And I've been hitting this uh, for the past couple of videos. So I'm not going to really go into it too much. But I do want to show everybody this is what they probably want to keep an eye on in a roundabout way. Okay, we are ranging between 8,300 to 8,100 trading, waiting for the next bigger move. RSI is still very close to overbought on daily. Major support at 7,800 and 7,680 respectively. A uh, critical area of 8,500 needs to be taken now to continue bullish momentum. And he's been saying that for the past like three, four days um, on this. And it's basically saying the reason why is because if, if we keep kind of dwindling and, and dawdling in this area, we are in this bear. We could possibly keep staying in this bearish scenario because once it hits 8,500 and then it drops significantly, it's going to be a tr it, considered a trap, you know, for the new buyers. Um, so... We don't want that. And that's what he's saying. We need to get over that 8,500 hump to move forward. So RSI, and like he's saying, yeah, absolutely. We're very, very high in the overbought. Oop, right here, sorry. So we're in the 75 line, basically 70 line. So we shall see what happened. Now, I drew this diagram and, and kept all this stuff up and running on TradingView. And uh, we're still up over the Ichimoku cloud, which is that red cloud right here. And this this uh, corridor that I've thrown in here, which is basically kind of the same as uh, the technical analysis, um, it, it equalizes. 
Um, it's just breaking out of that corridor there and kind of making a new corridor now um, for this. But it's kind of staying in this area of money. They run $8,200. So it's a, it's a good thing that we're staying up over that cloud. Um, Coinigy, I have these uh, four EMAs running, the 20, 30, 50, and 200. And as you can see, they're all starting to just um, condense you know, into this. And what, what happens when things condense? It's got to do something. It's got to go up or it's got to go down really dramatically. You know what I mean? So it can't just stay here and ride around in this area for, for very long. Cause, uh, and again, there's a magnetic effect, um, with the EMA 200 and, you know, it gets too far away. It's got to come back down when it gets too close. It's got to go away. So it, it's either one way or the other. And because everybody's thinking that it's on a bullish trend, um, and when I think so too, the problem is our volume. The volume needs to change with Bitcoin. If the volume does not change, um, which it is now, 4 million to 1.5, it's still right around that 4 million. I think we're at 3.8, 3.9 yesterday. And 1.5 for Ethereum. So Ethereum's just doing horrible um, with that. So this is some things to keep an eye on. You know, the reason why I do this is because other um, traders do this, obviously, and analysts. And these are the ones that I really do trust is the 20, 50, 200, and the 30 is kind of a, a middle line there, um, a gauge line uh, for the 20 and 50. So moving into Ethereum real quick, you know, just because, you know, I mine Ethereum. Um, I still believe Ethereum has a future. It just, the future in POS is just something I'm really, I'm really not happy about. Um, just because, you know, Bitcoin's doing, they're making their moves on everything and doing things correctly. So here's the Ichimoku cloud for Ethereum. It's under the Ichimoku. Um, it's sitting on that 382 line, just kind of riding around the 382 line on the Fibonacci. I don't think I mentioned that on uh, here as well, that it is up on that uh, 786 line. Oh, is it? No, 618 line for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's at the 618 line, and Ethereum is down here on their 382 line. So uh, differences, many, many differences coming this year. So Vitalik. No, non-giver of Ethereum. He says, I think there's too much of emphasis on Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever ETFs, and not enough emphasis on making it easier for people to buy five to ten, five to a hundred dollar in cryptocurrency via cards at corner stores. The former is better for pumping price, but the latter is much better for actual adoption. This is what I've been touching on, and uh, he kind of he's kind of missing the point. Um because obviously he wants to toot his own horn with Ethereum. But he's kind of missing the point with Bitcoin is Bitcoin is doing lightning um, uh, program, you know, like the lightning system and uh, RSK, um, uh, uh, DAP smart contracts for DAPs. So they're figuring out how to do what Ethereum should have been doing in the first place with POW, proof of work. And now they're going into POS because they can't do anything else at this point and go to proof of stake. Now, again, I don't want to hold coins. Yeah, I want to trade them. You know what I mean? I want to make money. Now, if I got to hold coins to make more money, it, it seems to kind of defeat the purpose of trading. But if you are a, a macro trader, I guess it works um, for you. But, for, you know, for for Ethereum, you know, once you start getting up into bigger money and it's it's either hold or in Bitcoin, it's either hold or, or trade quick when it goes up, you know, $1,000 in two days. So this is what he's missing. Atomic swap, okay? Litecoin and Bitcoin are coming out with the Lightning Network at the same time. And the reason why they're doing that is so they can atomic swap um, and be interoperable um, for purchasing. So whatever Vitalik here is saying about, you know, via cards, being able to do this via cards and so on, it's coming. It's coming. So the atomic swaps is that way, you know, if somebody's holding Litecoin, they can still purchase something uh, if they only take Bitcoin. So there's it's step it's a step by step and you know the main in the main net uh, our mainstream will come um, when these things are adopted so adoption is coming so he's just missing the mark and he's tooting his own horn a little bit unfortunately but that's what everybody does so NKN so NKN is a big uh, uh, decentralized internet shared internet and they're going to be interoperable as well and uh, what was their proof of relay is what they're going to be adding on to proof of work in order to make things um, secure, move fast, uh, you know, TPS, so on and so forth. So NK, I've been talking about NKN since I started my channel uh, a few months ago. Um, so, you know, it's something to think about, you know, interoperable, interoperability, 
um, decentralized internets, uh, you know, like NKN and other ones, you know, NKN, the reason why I like to touch on, you know, NKN is they've come out, you know, they want to get on Binance and they're putting a vote out there for everybody to kind of vote for Binance. And this guy, Whitfield Diffie, he is the, uh, well, you know, what do they call him? Uh, yeah, the inventor of the public key cryptography, Diffie Hellman. So, I mean, the cryptography system is Diffie Hellman. So, um, great guy, you know, great, great guy to have as uh, an advisor. And uh, he knows what he's doing when it comes to cryptography, obviously. So uh, it's something to think about, you know, when it comes to interoperability, atomic swapping, because it's all, you know, when it comes to interoperable internets and so on and so forth, they have to uh, adopt atomic swap as well in order for them to, uh, you know, change coins and coins much faster, much easier. And it's already, and the uh, system's already out there. So last but not least, 50 crypto fair and greed index at 54. Yesterday, 54, last week, 44. So great to see. It's just kind of sustaining. You know, we're going sideways and nobody's getting, uh, you know, fudded or, uh, you know, full FOMO'd in or fudded out. So uh, kind of a good thing to see. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, and you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.